Do you have a clutch that is slipping? Oh, that's bad. That's horrible. Let's go through all the possible scenarios that would cause that to happen. So first off, I'm going to cover the most common and easiest issue to fix. A misadjusted clutch lever and cable. And by the way, I just ran this cable way out of adjustment to show you guys what a slipping clutch would sound like. This bike actually doesn't have any issues with a slipping clutch. What we're looking for here is a little bit of play in the lever. So if you hold tension to the cable here, pull it out a little bit, and then work the cable and the lever back and forth, you'll be able to feel a little bit of movement there. So if you don't have any movement here, the clutch will be partially engaged and it'll be slipping like you heard in the video. And that'll burn up the clutch plates pretty quick too. Most clutch levers should have an adjuster like this one. So to tighten up the tension, you spin it out. And I'll show you where I was at before when I was riding it in the, uh, in the video there. I had it turned all the way out and there was just no movement whatsoever, just lock solid. You can see there's no, no play in it whatsoever. And then to loosen up the tension, you just spin it backwards. If you have a cable that is really loose and has a ton of movement in it, you won't be able to engage the clutch very well. So that's adjusted all the way in. And now you can see how much play there is there. When you have this much play, it's gonna be really difficult to engage the clutch. And that usually happens when the clutch plates start wearing or the clutch gets hot during the middle of a moto. So when you're out riding and you feel that the lever is losing its firmness like this, just give the adjuster a few clicks forward. Usually most guys will go over a jump and just roll it forward with their hand like that. And then just try to get to the position where you're most comfortable. And for me, it's right there. I'm gonna pull off this little cover here and show you exactly how much play I run in my cable. All right, this is the amount of free play that I run in my cable. Just holding tension on the cable and working the cable and lever apart from each other. So there should be about the width of a quarter or width of a coin here between the perch and the lever. A misadjusted clutch lever and cable is definitely the most frequent issue I see that leads to a slipping clutch. So definitely check that out before you look into anything else. And it's super simple to do. By the way, I would definitely recommend snagging one of these works connection levers and perches. Best lever that money can buy. They work super smooth and it's really easy to stay on top of cable free play with this adjuster here. I'll put the link to where I bought mine down below. The next possible cause we're going to check into is the gear oil. So obviously you want a fresh clean oil in there and something that's safe to use with wet clutches and is a quality oil as well. The gear oil I've been using lately is this Maxima MTL and it says right on it, wet clutch approved. So I've been using 80 weight for my 125 and I've been loving this stuff so far. So if you're having issues with your clutch slipping, never a bad idea to just change out your gear oil for something fresh and quality. And this bike needs an oil change anyways. I change my oil about every four to five rides, which equates anywhere from eight to 12 hours of ride time. Now with a quality product like Maxima MTL in there, there should be no questions regarding the oil. So the next issue I'm gonna check into is worn out clutch plates. It's pretty common, but requires a bit of disassembly. Now I could have done this when the oil was drained out of the bike, but I figured I'd show you guys how to do it without draining your oil. So we're gonna lay the bike on its left side, turn the fuel off first of course, and then remove the clutch cover. As you can see, the rear brake pedal is in the way of a few bolts on this clutch cover. So how we're gonna get around that is by pushing down the rear brake caliper and that'll free up some space so we can push down the brake pedal and then lock it down by putting something in the swing arm pivot bolt. I'm 
sure a lot of you guys have seen this tool throughout my videos. What it is, is a ASV Y handle, they call it. Just use those quarter inch sockets here. So I've got an eight mil, a 10 mil, and a 12 millimeter on it. So the most common sizes on a dirt bike. Super handy to have. I'll put the link to where I bought it down in the description. These are the clutch plates right here. All those plates you see stacked up down inside of there. To get to them, we're gonna have to remove these five bolts which hold on the clutch springs and clutch pressure plate. And you'll definitely wanna remove these five bolts in an even pattern. Now it's as simple as just lifting the pressure plate off of the clutch. So now we have full access to the clutch plates and how I'll pull them up is by using this 90 degree pick and getting under the plates at the very bottom here. Just a little tug will break them loose. There's usually some stiction there with the oil. And that is the entire clutch pack being removed at once. And the reason for pulling these out is to measure the plates and look for signs of wear or heat distortion. While I have the clutch apart, it's a great time to check out the other clutch components for wear. So a really common wear item here is the clutch basket. Over time, the fingers here on the basket will develop ridges and that'll lead to a really notchy clutch and shifting that isn't very smooth. So if you have ridges here on the fingers, your basket needs to be filed or just replaced. The inner hub on the clutch will develop wear as well. So things to look out for are grooves here on the plate surface. This one feels pretty good. And then the grooves here will develop some notches as well. So run a pick like I'm doing here down inside the grooves. And if you feel any notching there, that hub will need to be replaced. And finally, the pressure plate will get grooves here on the plate surface as well. So check into that too. Now it's time to measure out the clutch plates. I'll be using these calipers here to measure them. So really only the fibers need to be measured. The fiber plates are the ones with the tabs here on the outside. The steel plates don't really wear that much. You just wanna look for signs of heat discoloration. So like a blue or purple tint to it will indicate some heat damage there. So the Honda service manual states that the minimum thickness here for the fiber plates on this bike is 2.85 millimeter. So I'm gonna go through and measure all the plates and make sure they meet that spec. Oh, and before you pull your clutch pack apart to measure it, make sure all the fiber plates are the same. On some bikes, they'll have a different inner diameter or a different thickness. But on this particular bike, all the fiber plates are the same. Now, it's not a bad idea to just keep all the plates in the same order anyways. So it looks like the majority of these so far are all measuring out at around 2.95 millimeter. So plenty of meat still left on them. All these clutch plates measured out fine. I think the lowest number I saw was 2.94 millimeter. So they're ready to go back to the bike. And if you don't have one of these calipers, check the links down in the description to pick one up. Something to keep in mind if you're replacing your clutch plates is you'll need to be soaking them in oil for a day or two prior to installation. That way the oil has penetrated the plates and they're ready to go upon installation. All right, so the order the plates need to go in is a fiber on the bottom followed up with the steel, then alternate fiber, steel, fiber, steel, and there should be a fiber on top and a fiber on bottom. All these plates will need to go in individually. Can't just set them all in like we did upon uh, disassembly.
So for you guys that haven't torn into a clutch before, I'm gonna give you a little overview of how it works. So watch this little pin here as I pull in the clutch lever up on the handlebars. So when I'm pulling in the clutch lever, this pin is pushing out the pressure plate against the pressure of the clutch springs. And in turn, that allows the clutch plates to separate from each other. And what that does is it basically disconnects the engine from the rear wheel. So you say you pull in the clutch, you're not allowing the power to get to the rear wheel. And then on the other side of things, when the clutch lever is all the way out, all these plates are being pushed down by the clutch springs, you know, the springs that are in here and they lock together. And so that essentially locks the rear wheel and the engine together and delivers power from the engine to the rear wheel. So you can imagine like once these plates wear out, they don't have as much friction, which is why they're called friction plates. And the, uh, the power isn't distributed to the rear wheel as efficiently. So you have a clutch that's slipping. And then going back to the cable and lever adjustment up on the handlebars, if you don't have any free play there, Basically what that's doing is pushing up on the pressure plate slightly and allowing a little gap here in the plates. So basically engaging the clutch a little bit and that is going to wear out the fiber here on the fiber plates pretty quickly. So I hope all that makes sense for you guys. The easiest way to explain it is when you pull the clutch lever, the clutch plates basically separate from each other and disconnect the engine from the rear wheel. And then when you let the clutch lever out, the clutch plates go together and lock together because they're, you know, have friction or these are meant to create friction and that connects the engine with the rear wheel. That's the easiest way I can explain it. Now I'm going to pop the pressure plate back into place. One more thing to measure before putting this clutch back together are the clutch springs. So the service manual specifies 35 millimeters as the minimum free length here. So all these measure out at about 35.2 to 35.3 millimeter. So they're still within spec and now we can put them in the bike. And again, these bolts need to be tightened evenly. Now I'm gonna set the torque on these bolts. The spec is seven foot pounds, so not really a ton of torque. So to lock the engine, I'm gonna reach underneath and put the bike into gear. And this should allow me to torque these bolts. All right, there we go, clicked into gear. And I should be able to torque these bolts pretty easily now. So as you can imagine, as you're torquing, it's gonna move the rear wheel a little bit. So you may have to hold the rear wheel into place as you're torquing down these bolts. So once again, you want to torque them in an even pattern. So like a star pattern here, that's what I'm using. All right, they're all torqued. Time to slap on the cover. And then for the last step, just pull out the screwdriver and don't forget to pump back up your brake pressure. That is it for checking over all the clutch components. Pretty simple deal. Now let's take it for a little test burn and see how things shake out. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and possibly learned a thing or two. This one was actually a ton of fun to shoot. If you'd like to see more videos like this, support the channel by shopping over at primemx.com. I've got hats, t-shirts, stickers, and a few cleaning products over there as well. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.